I'm about to launch myself at the speed of light away from planet Earth. And here we go. All right, so this is a speed that's slightly higher than the speed of light. We're moving away from Earth and you can see it disappearing in the distance and becoming a very bright star-like object. Now, today we're going to be talking about the idea of traveling at speeds faster than light. And what I wanted to answer is, so out there in the universe, are there any objects that are basically moving at the speed faster than the speed of light, which is technically the limit. And so today we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, our universe and we're also going to talk a little bit about red shift and blue shift uh, and specifically this is of course Doppler effect and we're going to talk about uh, something called Hubble law. Welcome to What the Math and let's start. <laughs> And I think we should really start with um, Einstein's theory of relativity, which basically states that, well, at uh, as you approach the speed of light, you're going to experience something called dilation uh, and stretching of everything. So because of the way that you're passing these objects right now at a really high speed, they're technically going to stretch. And as you're approaching them, they're actually going to experience something called the blue shift. Uh, basically, uh, it's kind of something that you've experienced in real life when you hear a car pass by you. Uh, this is called a Doppler effect. And um, if you're moving toward an object or if an object is moving toward you um, at a very high speed, uh, well, let's actually talk about cars first. So when a car moves toward you, you hear a higher pitch sound. Uh, and this is here, here's a picture of what this looks like. And I'm just gonna move toward whatever this is. Is this Mars probably? It's Venus, okay. Let's toward, move toward Venus and try to fly past it. Um, and as you're moving toward Venus, um, just like the car's sound, it's, uh, its color is going to change toward blue. It, this is what we call a blue shift. As I move past Venus at a ridiculously high speed, which is actually unrealistic in real life because this is actually 50 times the speed of light. As I move past it, it's going to stretch and fly past me. And now if I look back, if I actually look back at Venus, which I'm gonna try to do right now, and I don't know where it is anymore. If I look back at it, what I'll see is, let's just look at this object. It's going to be red shifted. Now it's not really well represented here, but it is well represented if I move into outer, galaxy and look at other galaxies and you'll see what I mean in a second. Let's exit Milky Way for a second and let's just look around. So you'll notice that as I look around, here they come, some galaxies are red. So let's find the first red galaxy. I, I just actually just saw one and I, I totally lost it again. Here's one. There's a red galaxy right here. I, I should probably just, I'm gonna exit the uh, spaceship mode for a second. There's a red galaxy right there. Now, it's actually a quasar. Ooh, I got really lucky. These are pr pretty rare objects in um, space, space Engine. It's kind of hard to find them. Uh, but so here is a quasar. It's red because, not because it's actually red, but because it's actually moving away from us and we see it as red shifted. Now, if I move toward it, if I actually come to it, zoink, you, you may have noticed that it changed from red to yellow to orange to normal color. Now this quasar, even though it actually doesn't really look like a real quasar, is uh, no, a normal galaxy. It's just a regular galaxy that is emitting a lot of um, uh, rays, a lot of various energy from its two tips right here. And I've explained this in a previous video about quasars that you can watch um, in one in, on my channel. But basically, so this is a normal galaxy, but the reason why it looked red, like this galaxy right there is look red, is because it's actually moving away from the Milky Way. And some of these galaxies will, will actually look brighter and they'll look blue. So if I look at the galaxy like this one here, and it's kind of bluish, it's because it's actually moving toward us. So it's blue shifted a little bit. So this is a normal regular galaxy that is blue shifted and it, that's why it looks a little bit brighter. Now the thing about the Doppler effect is that on Earth it's relatively simple. So if things uh, move toward you, they're um, they're blue shifted, or they, I guess you can call them uh, the increase in frequency of, of sound. And if they're moving away, they decrease in frequency. But in space it works a little bit different. So there's actually two kinds of um, Doppler effects in space. One of them can be caused by 
a really, really, really heavy object, like a black hole, for example. So if a light passes through the central black hole here, because of the mass of the black hole, it will uh, lose some of its frequency and will be redshifted as well. The uh, same thing can happen if it passes through, for example, dark matter. So here's a picture of you know light passing through dark matter and becoming redshifted. And that's because of the gravity that mass creates and causes the light to lose some of its uh, frequency and basically being redshifted. It sort of stretches it. And we refer to this as a gravity redshift. So this is basically a, a very common effect of when something passes through a massive body and then, uh, or, or I guess light passes through a massive body and then loses a lot of its uh, radiation. Now, oh, there's a very bright galaxy here. Let's go to that one. It's also a quasar actually. Let's go check out this quasar here. And this was very blue shifted. I think it's really moving f uh, toward us really fast. But there's another effect that's really, really interesting. And this effect is called cosmological redshift. Now, I'm going to talk about this in a second because it's actually a relatively complex phenomenon that uh, took us years to figure out. And we're still not exactly sure how accurate we know the number for that particular redshift. Now, before I talk about this, though, let me just uh, kind of explain to you how um, uh, redshift is measured in um, in astronomy. So we use something called Z, a letter Z or a letter Z in Canada or Britain or others, some other countries. Anyway, so Z is redshift. To calculate it, you basically what you do is let's just say we, we, we observe the light from this galaxy and we're going to move a little bit farther away. And from this distance, even though the light was, um, let's just say, blue, uh, when it gets to us, it's sort of more like uh, orange. It turned orange. So, so maybe its original wavelength was about like 450 nanometers, which is kind of close to blue. And then when it got to us, it became um, something along uh, 500. 70 or maybe 600 nanometers. So basically it decreased by 150 nanometers. So in order for you to calculate the Z, the, the red shift of this particular phenomenon, you take the, um, the observed wavelength, you subtract it from original wavelength, and then you divide this by the original wavelength. So in this case, it's 600 minus 450 divided by 450, which should give us approximately 0.33 so the redshift here is about about 0.33 which means that something on the way made this light lose its frequency and uh, shifted it toward orange but here is the tricky part so there was a person by the name of george lemaitre uh, a french astronomer slash astrophysicist who using general relativity theory by einstein uh, proposed that um, there's actually, surprisingly, a redshift, a really, really high redshift from uh, galaxies that are really far away from us. And the farther away they are, the more redshifted they are, as if they were all moving away from us. Now, this today we know as um, the Hubble law, which actually is attributed to Edwin Hubble, who then kind of developed this theory a little bit more and even was able to calculate this. But so what this means is that, let, just, let me just show you the example using our Milky Way. Let's go back to the Milky Way for a second. And so what I'm going to demonstrate is the cosmological redshift. So this is the Milky Way. You can see the distance to the Milky Way right here. And I'm going to move away from the Milky Way to a distance of approximately 3.2 light years or 1 million parsec. 1 million parsec is about this far. This is the Milky Way. You can kind of see it right there. There's Andromeda that's somewhere around us. Where is the Andromeda? Where are you? You're so big. How can I not see you? There it is. There's the Andromeda is right here. So it's a little bit farther away than Andromeda. Um, some other galaxies are a little bit closer to us, like uh, the small Magellanic and the large Magellanic clouds are right there next to us. And so basically this is a distance of 1 million parsec or 3.2 million light years. Or in other words, the light travels from here to, um, to our galaxy in 3.2 million years. Now at this distance, Edwin Hubble was able to calculate that everything at this distance is actually moving away or stretching away at a speed of approximately 67.8 or maybe approximately 68 kilometers per second. So no matter where you are along this sphere, I guess, um, at a distance of 1 million parsec, you're going to be moving away from our galaxy in the center. And the reason why this is happening is because of the Big Bang. So when Big Bang happened, 
the universe, the space-time, the, the actual space that is stretching out. It basically is still stretching out and the galaxies that are far away from us are moving away from us at faster speeds. They're actually accelerating away from us. So at 1 million parsec, it's about um, 68 kilometers per second. If I were to move to a distance of approximately 2 parsec, uh, sorry, not two, but two million parsec, so twice the distance. At this distance, we're now moving away from our, and even if we're just standing still, basically, I could just completely s be still, I will still be moving away from our galaxy, from the Milky Way, at a speed of approximately 156 kilometers per second. And the farther away you move, the faster you will move away from that object. So the one of the analogies I've actually seen online of trying to explain this is, Apparently, when you make bread with raisins in it, as the bread expands, every raisin inside that bread will actually move away from each other raisin at uh, a higher speed. So uh, every raisin inside the bread will be moving away from each other. And it's the same thing happens with all of these galaxies. So every galaxy is actually moving away from each other. And some farther away galaxies move away from us at faster speeds. Even if they're actually moving toward us, they're being slowed down by the stretch of the space-time. And this is what we refer to as the cosmological redshift. And assuming this is true, and we know that this is true because we've actually measured it many, many times with using many different uh, scientific tools, if we go to a, a very far away distance, is there a galaxy that's actually moving away from us faster than the speed of light? And this is what we're going to try to demonstrate right now and this is what we're going to try to do. Right, so we're going to start right here with the Milky Way and as you can see here we have small Magellanic Cloud and the large Magellanic Cloud, the small galaxies right next to ours. Now we're currently at a distance of 182,000 light years. I'm going to start moving away from Milky Way and just uh, keep track of this number. So what we're measuring here is we're going to be measuring the distance. So at, uh, at a distance of about 3.2 billion light years 3.2 billion light years we are should we should technically be, be moving away from our uh, galaxy of milky way at a speed of about 69,000 kilometers per second which is about one fourth or maybe slightly higher than one third of the speed of light so we're gonna go to that distance right now uh, so this is 3.2 light years away and you can see all of these other galaxies buzzing through the space and time and buzzing, buzzing away from us so this is a distance of 3.2 we obviously cannot see the milky way anywhere it's somewhere far far away but because we are so far away from it um we are currently being stretched away by space time or we're being moved away by space time at a speed of approximately this is very approximate because it's still not 100% accurately measured, but it's about 69,000 or sorry, 68,000 kilometers per second. It's a very, very high speed. It's like I said, it's about, uh, I would say, one third ish of speed of light. Now, let's move to um, a distance where it would be almost the speed of light. So, this would be almost the speed of light at a distance of about 14.7 billion light years. So this has to now become 14.7 uh, giga light years or billion light years. We're moving at the highest possible speed in the game right now, which is 326.16 million light years per second. That's how fast we're moving. Uh, talk about uh, faster than speed uh, travel. This is probably as fast as it gets in any game. I've never seen anything faster. So right now it's almost 11. Let's get to 12 and let's see where we are. 12 and 13 and here we go. 14 is coming up. So we're looking at 14.7 and this is, uh, if you use a calculator, if you try to calculate this. Um, so for, like I said, for every million parsec, it increases by um, 68 kilometers per second. So to make this speed of light, which is approximately 299,000 kilometers per second, or almost 300,000 kilometers per second, you have to be at a distance of approximately 14.7 uh, giga light years, or um, billion light years. So at this distance right here, you are actually moving away from our galaxy, you're being stretched away uh, by the after effects of the Big Bang at the speed of light. So, if you were to look at the Milky Way, if you could find it somewhere out there, I don't think we can even find it anymore. I don't think I can, yeah, I, I will not be able to target it, unfortunately, it's too small. Um, so, at that at that point, it's redshifted so much, and it's moving away from us at the speed of light. 
Now, here's the thing. We can actually keep going. That's right. We can keep going and reach what would be the limit of obs observable universe. And you can guess that this is where we are actually have never seen anything yet or we'll never see it again. And this is a, in the game. It's a resonant really well. I'm going to actually reach that limit. Here we go. So this is the point where we actually don't really, we'll never see it because these galaxies are moving away from us uh, faster than the speed of light and and so here the, the space time is stretching away from us at such high speeds that the light from this area will probably really never reach us. And so this is the area that we actually refer to as cosmological event horizon. And just like the black holes have event horizons, so does the cosmos. So this is the universal or universe um, event horizon after which we cannot see anything. This is approximately five uh, gigaparsecs or about 16 billion light years away from us. And so the light that is emitted from here will actually never reach us because it's just way too far away and these galaxies are moving at speeds higher than speed of light. However, we can actually still see the light that these galaxies emitted a long time ago. So when they were still closer to us and when the galaxy was not as big and actually uh, was stretched less and uh, this area here was not moving as fast, we received some of their light and that light we can actually still see. But any new light we'll never re receive and this will forever be dark to us. Unless, of course, one day the universe stops stretching and decides to contract. And this is a theory that might be true, might be not. It might never contract. It might just stop expanding. But at this point, while it's still expanding, we'll never see these galaxies again. And vice versa, they will never see us either because they don't see darkness. They actually see, they obviously see other galaxies around them. They see everything like we do in our galaxy. So they don't see anything different. But uh, for us, this is kind of what it looks like. So there's a limit to how far we can see. And so just to summarize, so the, uh, the Hubble law refers to the idea of the constantly expanding universe that expands uh, relatively equally in every direction. And it also refers to the idea of this constant expansion that can be kind of measured and it's approximately 68 kilometers per second per 1 million parsec or 3.2 million light years. And so all of these faraway objects will always have higher Doppler effect, higher redshift, the farther away they are from us. So that's kind of what the Hubble law refers to. And so to answer my original question, so does anything actually move at the speeds faster than the speed of light? Well, yes, because the universe stretches them away from us at speeds higher than the speed of light. But by themselves, they are not actually moving at the speed of light. They're, they might be moving really, really slow, but because the space time is stretching away from us at such high velocity, which is actually not forbidden according to Einstein's theory of relativity, this can happen. You can have space time that moves really fast. And so because of that, yes, right now there are many 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 objects that we can actually detect uh, or whose old light we can detect ancient light we can still detect that are actually moving away from us at speeds higher than the speed of light and we've actually detected objects whose redshift or their z score is um, up to eight so there are quasars and there are some other objects out there whose redshift is eight and at the redshift of eight uh, it means that the galaxy is moving away from us at a speed of approximately 97% of the speed of light, which is pretty much as close as, uh, as they'll get. And then once they reach the speed of higher than that, they disappear from our view forever and they never come back. So basically, this is uh, the answer to that question. So yes, there are things moving faster than the speed of light right now, uh, but not in the same way uh, as a spaceship, of course. So a spaceship would never be able to move at a sp uh, faster than the speed of light because the energy required to get that, uh, that highway speed would be infinitely large. But the space time itself, the space that we live in, absolutely and totally can move faster than the speed of light, which is why faster than speed of light engines are a possibility. If they can stretch the space and make us move faster in relation to it. So that's the answer to that question. And hopefully this was helpful. Let's go back to earth and appreciate the idea of having these imaginary trips to other galaxies or even the end of our universe, also known as the cosmological event horizon. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe, like it, share it with your friends, and also check out some of the other Space Engine or Universe Sandbox 2 videos that I posted before.
Don't forget, there's a lot more videos about space coming in the future and a lot more interesting questions that will be answered soon. Thank you, game you later, and bye-bye.